بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد Child safety and security, this is a very important aspect which we need to consider and is overlooked. Kullukum ra' wa kullukum mas'ool an ra'iyyatihi. All of you are shepherds and all of you will be answerable about their flocks. Al-imamu mas'oolun wa rajulu mas'oolun. So whether it's uh, a Imam, an Amir, a ruler over his people, he is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock. Likewise, a man is a shepherd fi ahlihi, with regards to his family, wa huwa mas'oolun an ra'iyyatihi, and he is in charge of the inhabitants of his household, and is responsible for his flock. And a lady, a wife, wal maratu ra'iyatun fi bayti zawjiha mas'oola an ra'iyatiha. And the wife is in charge of a husband's house and children and she is responsible for them. So we have uh, responsibilities and we will be answerable about this responsibility. So this responsibility is for their deen, for their akhirat, for their hashar, for their pulsirat, for their uh, survival in this jungle of this world and survival of akhirat as well. So deen priority as well as dunya as well, whether they are at risk and they need to be trained physically, mentally, psychologically, to prepare for, for the challenges that will face them in this dunya, such challenges that will take them backwards in their deen and akhirat. So preparation for dunya is preparing for akhirat. And any tarnish which will cause them to go back and uh, not be adequately prepared for akhirat, we need to target that as well. So look at the wisdom of the words of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam that how a shepherd has to look, look after and be cautious with regards to his flock. Firstly, number one, a shepherd is there all the time. He does not abandon. If he has to take them out in the morning, till the evening, he's there. If it's lunchtime, he's there. He makes sure he does not leave the flock alone. Our children are our responsibility and we will be answerable to Allah. If my business, my work, my occupation, my profession is more important than my deen and the deen of my children and the preservation of deen for the akhirat, then there is a problem. If an ordinary shepherd has understood he has to take out time for his flock, then why the people of Iman have not understood that our children, our wives, are in amana and it is a responsibility and we will be answerable to Allah with regards to that. There should be no box that's not unticked. There should be no I that is dotted. There should be no T that is crossed with regards to the dunya. And I'm using the word dunya means not preservation of the dunya so they can drive large fancy supercars or they can live in palatial homes. Securing of their dunya is preservation of dunya which is sufficient for them to preserve their deen. So firstly, there are different challenges in this world and as parents we have the responsibility. The child is naive, the child is young, the child is ignorant and there are predators out there to ready, to who's ready to steal their Iman, ready to steal their chastity, their haya, their modesty, ready to steal shayateen, iblis, etc. out there to steal their Iman. Secondly, 
a shepherd when he he's, he has got his flock he knows the grazing places which company which sahabat which environment which masjid which which darul ulum which ulama rabbaniyin which grazing places do i need to put my wife and kids so that the iman is nourished and the deen is protected their dunya is also protected they are not prone to theft they are not prone to child abuse they are not prone to kidnapping kidnapping they are not prone to molestation and if they are prone in the places we've given them the ideal teaching talim gear equipment to protect themselves so that they are not vulnerable so when the shepherd takes the sheep to a grazing place is considering all these factors number 3 he considers the environment is it uh, a safe environment is the weather whether it's it's rain whether it's hail whether it's heat waves whether it's the sun i need to take my flock to an environment which is conducive and if there's any risk factor then i will give them the protection is need that is needed and required number 4 considers the enemies so when a shepherd is taking his sheep he doesn't take them to an area where there are many wolves where there are many lions he takes them to a more safer area very well knowing predators may tread this path but i have procured and i've secured the area to make sure predators will not come close number 5 he will make sure that the sheep does not leave the flock don't send them on their own we send our kids on their own we send them to places of battle and say we have trust in allah nauzubillah trust comes after trusting asbab first trust the system before you trust the system you have trust in allah after you trust the system you still have the same trust in allah but fatawakkal ala alhayy alladhi la yamut the trust is also utilizing the asbab which allah has given us so you don't leave them on their own i'm sending my child to go uh, seek education in a foreign land in, in in a university environment where there is a possibility of 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 of, of snatching my child's iman there's a possibility where her, her chastity will be breached there is a possibility where people who have no iman and have no morals will breach her chastity so these are all factors which when it comes back to haunt us like molana yunus patel sahab rahmatullah alayhi used to say send your child in the rain give them a uh a, 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 a opportunity to say you know what you can go in the rain but you won't get wet you won't get wet he said this is folly on our part the fact that you send them in the rain and expecting them not to get wet is folly on your side it is foolishness as well so we send them in those environments of destruction and we expect production and construction then don't be surprised when there's complete annihilation and destruction number 6 in this effort if you need help to preserve the flock then if you need a stick like a shepherd has a stick to protect himself from the wolves if he needs a dog for a, a sheep that goes off then he will utilize whatever means is needed for their preservation whatever it takes exhaust every avenue how come in our dunya with our cars we've got safety we've got security with our homes we've got safety and security but with our children and our wives we're very relaxed 
Give them the cell phone. Let them go out. Let them enjoy themselves. In a world, in the world of abuse, in a world of mismanagement, in a world of, of, of no trust and trustworthiness, we still leave it on our cool and say, yeah, it's fine. I trust my child. I trust so and so. So whatever needs, means possible, exhaust yourself. Number seven, the shepherd takes them out. He's by this side. He brings them back. He secures them. So in the morning, he takes them out. In the evening, he brings them back. When he's with them outside, he's there as a protector. When he's back home and he's not there, he's brought them into the pen where he makes sure that nobody, no wolf can infiltrate. Likewise, he has traps. So if there's wolves, if there's other predators, he has traps to catch them. So then don't come near the flock. What? What systems have we implemented? No, it's fine. They're doing online, doing their homework, giving them access to every platform that their iman and their chastity and their modesty can be stolen. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Oh, you believe, protect yourself and your families. So protection is one deen, as Ali ibn Abi Talha is reported from Abdullah ibn Abbas. In obedience of Allah, avoid the disobedience of Allah. Order your families to remember Allah when you apply all means to preserve them, then Allah will save you from the fire. Ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara, Mujahid is mentioned. Have taqwa in Allah and order your family to have taqwa. So what are the means, what are the asbab that needs to be implemented to make sure that they have taqwa? Likewise, Qatada has mentioned that he commands them to obey Allah, not to disobey Allah. The orders of Allah, acting upon the orders of Allah. And if you see any moment where your wife, your children can disobey Allah, then you implement methods, firstly you stop them. It's not only stopping them, forbidding them from evil. What methods need to be implemented? So there is no breach. We are living in an era where a mother cannot trust her own daughter in front of her husband. Where a son cannot trust his wife in front of his father. And yet the parents are lax and they are saying, no, it's fine. I trust my child. I trust so and so. What, what jihalat, what ghaflat, what negligence. And uh, we cry our whole life. So Muqatil has mentioned, it is an obligation for a believer, for a Muslim, to teach, to train, to prepare his family members what Allah has commanded them to do and what Allah has forbidden them when there's no tarbiya and there's no iman and bay hayai and modesty becomes the order of the day, then a person will commit crimes beyond bestiality. And that term has become common. The minds have become so sick to become beasts, to beat people, to, 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 to tie people and perform acts of bestiality has become a, a, a passion. It has become a fashion. So that's why your simple things. Murus sibyanakum bisala wahum abna'u sab'a sinin. When they are seven years old, encourage them for salah, encourage them for deen. And uh, when they reach the age of 10, فَضْرِبُوهُمْ عَلَيْهَا If you have to take them to task for it. And separate them from their beds. 
even your own son and own daughter. Dean is teaching us precaution. We, we, we may pay, take precaution with regards to our worldly commodities. Your, 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 your wedding ring and your jewelry are in safes. So for your dunya, you preserve it because that's important. But your kids are not important. Your wife is not important. Let her go out, dress how she wants to, entice in other men. It's, it's, it's not important. But uh, your money, your safe, your, your portfolio, your bank balances, your dunya is very safe. And you got the best lawyers and you got the best accountants and you got the best advisors and you got the best stockbrokers because you love your dunya, but you don't love uh, people who are, are more important. So we're not only supposed to worry about the, the deen, but we are protectors from all sides. Are we, are we too busy to care, to bother a small slub? can devastate their lives. So we are masters in investments and, 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 and brokerage and, and stock markets. But to everything else, we are jahil. With regards to the deen of Allah, we are jahil. The, the statistics speak for itself. Child abuse is, 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 is every 10 seconds in the United States. It is reports every 10 seconds. Every year, more than 4 million referrals are made for to child protection agencies covering more than 4.3 million children. The US has one of the worst records of uh, abuse losing on an average five children uh, every day. So if you look at the amount of child abuse in just one year, then uh, Alone, 2019, 656,000 victims. This would cover 10 modern football stadiums. 10 football stadiums. One in five women, one in 13 men have reported to have been sexually abused from the age of zero to 17 years. 120 million girls and uh, under 20 years of age have suffered some form of forced sexual contact. A quarter of all adults have been reported, have reported to have been physically abused as children. The statistics speak for itself. And, 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 and what's, what's the knock-on effect? A child who is abused is likely to abuse others as an adult. So this violence is passed on from generation to generation. One person who's got this habit may have abused five, ten kids. He's created ten. These ten are going to go another ten. Exponentially, we are moving into a realm of destruction. Look at the behavior, uh, health and crime related effects of this abuse. So we've said exponentially, but uh, children who have been uh, abused have substance abuse, child maltreatment, uh, that, uh, abuse to, to the next level. Look at crime. 14% of all men in prison. 36% of women in prison, this is only the US, were abused as children. They become criminals. So children who have experienced child abuse and neglect are nine times more likely to become involved in criminal activity. So what steps have we taken, implemented to gauge the situation? Somebody may say that uh, this is outside the M, but of the topic we are saying, this is the next generation. If you survive the apocalypse, if you survive the Armageddon, your children need to survive is what generation are we creating? What, what, uh, Heritage are we creating? It is a responsibility as a parent 
to tie your camel and if you need to use three ropes then use three ropes but tie the camel properly may Allah subhanahu wa give us the understanding the reality of what devastation and destruction thus neglect can cause the amal for today is to make wudu properly فَإِذَا هُوَ قَامَ فَصَلَّى فَحِيْ مُحَمِدَ اللَّهُ وَأَثْنَى عَلَيْهُ وَمَجَّدَهُ بِالَّذِي هُوَ أَهْلَهُ وَفَرَّغَ قَلْبَهُ لِلَّهُ And then you go to perform salah properly and you devote your heart to Allah إِلَّا انْصَرَفَ مِنْ خَتِئَتِهِ كَيَوْمٍ وَلَدَتْهُ أُمُّهُ He will turn away and return with his sins forgiven like the day his mother gave birth to him sonless. Wa akhiru dawana anilhamdulillah. Yirabbil alameen.